spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport. The thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by GMC Truck. Trucks are what we're all about. By Budweiser. For all you do, this bud's for you. And by Republic Airlines. Nobody serves our Republic like Republic. about a different world. A world of truck farms and desert, which someone realized a while ago was a natural setting for several kinds of motorcycle racing. Dirt, motocross, pavement. And that led to it being selected for the event we'll see today. The super bikers, where some of the best riders in the world, will be asked to show just how versatile they can be. Good afternoon. I'm Jim McKay reporting from Carlsbad on edition three of the super bikers. Now, the concept of this competition is very simple, really. From the various branches of motorcycle racing, from motocross, from road racing, from dirt track, and from speedway, some of the finest riders in the world are drawn together, from Europe and from the United States. They're brought here to Carlsbad not to race on one surface or the other, but to compete on a hybrid sort of course, one that combines some of the elements of speedway, some of the elements of motocross and of dirt track and of road racing. At the end, what will have been proven? Well, quite possibly, who is the most versatile of all the riders who have come here? So let's bring in our expert of the day on the motorsport, the well-known American road racer, Sam Posey. Sam, good to have you with us. And although you haven't done motorcycle racing, you uh, have been deep into this for the past couple of days. Well, I certainly have. It, it promises to be a very exciting event, and one which offers enormous contrast. Because on the one hand, this great beauty. The riders made it with their machines soaring over the leaps and everything. It's quite an exceptional sight. On the other side of the fence, these guys only get together once a year in this event. They are unbelievably competitive. What this has meant so far is a plethora of accidents. It's just been going down everywhere. Yeah, there have been lots of accidents. In practice, Brad Lackey broke a finger in this spell and told us why this poses a special problem for him in the race. I had these injuries with these fingers from previous crashes, but I think maybe I broke this one up in here today because it's much slower and much worse and doesn't work too good. So I'm going to have a problem with the brakes because the brakes just brakes and you've got to really get on them hard and really pull them and I don't have as much strength in that hand so I might be running a problem near the end of the race. Now here's a helicopter look down on the course designed for this year's super bikers. Incidentally, they're going in the opposite direction from last year. To explain the idiosyncrasies of the course, we asked the defending champion young Steve Wise of Texas to take us around right from the start. During the start, the most important thing is to make sure you get a good jump at the flag, don't get very much wheel spin on the rear wheel, and you don't want the front end to come up at all. You want to have all your weight on the front of the bike. And uh, then that right-hand turn we're going to make, the next right-hand turn after the start we're going to make is very, very slick because uh, they have drag races here and there's a lot of rubber there. You have to really have your weight corrected right on the bike. You have to have the bike kind of leaned over and you have to have your weight more or less on the opposite side of the motorcycle. And the gears, I'll probably shift gears twice going down that downhill straightaway from second to third. Then I'll be downshifting back to first gear for the next right-hand turn, using a lot of front brake coming in that turn. I mean a lot of front brake. From course pavement, we change back to foot pavement again. And uh, I won't put my foot out at all there. I'll more or less just try to slide it through that turn, probably half throttle. Down the straightaway and up the straightaway hill, there, you want to keep tucked in as much as you possibly can. I'm going to try to be getting under the paint of the gas tank if I can. Coming to the downhill section, you have to just really clamp on the front brake going downhill, slow down from around 115 miles an hour to 5 miles an hour. You make a real tight right-handed turn at the bottom of the hill, which uh, coming out of a slow turn like that, the front end always wants to come up. All the time the front end always wants to wheelie. So you have to keep your weight over the front of the bike as much as possible. And you can't just jam right into the dirt right off the bat because you're gonna, the wheels are going to spin a lot. So you've got to be really cautious right there. You hit a little jump, go underneath the tunnel, come an uphill part of the dirt, then come into the flat track left-handed turn. Be sure you keep your bike in a good part of the power range. You don't want to let it bog. You don't want to let it rev too high. And it's also left-handed, so you can't shift because I'm going to have my foot down. And I shift my shifters on the left-hand side, so I can't shift. 
And that's another thing in motocross. We're so used to squaring turns up. You want to keep an arc to that turn. You can't uh, square that turn. You have to keep a nice, smooth, fast rhythm, uh, what I would call an arc. You go over the TT jump, which you want to cross from the right-hand side of the track, you want to go over the jump, and when you land, you want to be on the left-hand side of the track, so you can be set up for the next right-handed turn. But then, this is one of the trickiest parts of the track, because you're coming down the hill on the dirt, crossing over the wood of the bridge, and you're going to be braking during this time, so you're going to have wood, dirt, and the pavement all three in a row. So it makes it very, very tricky. You go through that next chicane, and then uh, the most important thing is just to keep your momentum up without sliding to the chicane and get back down that straight away. The course through the eyes of the defending champion, Steve Wise. So we've met the course and the champ. There's the scene in the starting area as the riders prepare. We'll be right back. There are three heats scheduled in the Superbikers for today, one for the road racers, one for the dirt track riders, and one for the motocross men, with the top five finishers to qualify for the final race. Now, the first two heats have already taken place, and surely we'll see today's other race for the motocross. The road racers, Eddie Lawson, Dave Aldana, John Bettencourt, Rolf Bielan, and Richard Schlachter. The dirt track, Mike Kidd, Wayne Rainey, Ted Booty, Steve Eklund, and Scott Pearson. So in the middle of the first row, that's the defending champion, Steve Wise. Others in there include Carlos Serrano, Jeff Jennings, Serge Bagu, Jack Johnson. In the second row, we have Graham Noyce, for example, a former world champion in Hawkins Golf with another one. And there's Brad Lackey, left at the start. Headed for the first turn, though, it is the defending champion. It's Steve Wise, number one, taking the lead just that quickly. Incredibly, Wise actually did not get a very good start right off the line, but when it came time to break for that first turn, he left his braking later supremely confident in that difficult terrain and has taken the lead. In second place is close behind number eight, Jeff Jennings. Third now is Graham Noyce, number two, then number six, Carlos Serrano, number ten, Mike Baker. Those are the top five right now, and again, just five will move into the final, remember. Wise on the very fastest part of the track. As he told us uh, in his tour of the track, they hit about 115 miles an hour there and have to slow to just five miles an hour here at the hairpin. So it's still Steve Wise in the lead. Jeff Jennings close behind him, as you see. They stretching it out a little bit over Graham Noyce and Carlos Serrano. Into the top, off the course is Hawkins Carlquist for a former world champion off the course, and that's going to cost him a lot of territory, Sam. That's a very big development. This shot, that shows how far back he is. Now, Carlquist is a brilliant rider, though, Jim, but, of course, he has to finish in the top five, so we'll have to watch for how he can do. Here they come off the jump. The bike seems to lean towards the left as they come off there. Yes, as Wise explained to us, they take off from the right side, then must cross in the air over to the left side to be set up properly for the next jump. No change in the standings among the leaders so far. It's still Steve Wise in the lead. There he is, Jeff Jennings behind him, number eight. Then Graham Noyce, remember, a world champion from England, Carlos Serrano, and Mike Baker. So Steve Wise is taking the first of the chicane now down on the pavement. And so far, these chicanes have been uh, very difficult for the uh, riders to negotiate. Both Ricky Graham and Eddie Lawson have gone off in earlier heat. Steve Wise, though, Jim, seems a little different from his fellow motocrossers. His dominance on the pavement, uh, a form of the sport that he's really not supposed to be an expert at, is really impressing me. No end. at the fastest part of the track. A beautiful shot from our helicopter. Wise almost out racing it. Now he sits up to get the aerodynamic effect of the wind dragging against his chest there for helping him slow down for that hairpin. Wise's start is all the more remarkable when you realize that Graham Noyce, bike number two here, is lying second in the world championship this year. And Noyce and Wise both have the same bikes underneath them, both Hondas, and yet Wise, so early, just two laps into the race, has pulled out this enormous lead. And Noyce, as you see right now, in a good battle for second place with number eight, Jeff Jennings, who is second at this moment. Hawkins Carlquist has started working his way back up through the pack again after going off the course, by the way. But there is the leader, Steve Wise. Jennings 
still second. Noyce third. Toronto is still fourth, and Baker is still fifth. No changes in the leaders. It's interesting to watch the motocross experts negotiating the motocross part of the track, but on a bike not as well suited to this terrain as the bike that they'd be used to. These bikes here do not have the long suspension travel that the motocross bikes have, and as a result, you can see that they're not as easy to keep under control over the bump. Okay, we've just seen the five leaders there from the front again as they come through the chicane. Number one, there he is, Steve Y. Behind him, number eight in the yellow helmet, Jeff Jennings. Number two, Graham Noy. Back on the leader again with that right hand in the early part of the race course. There's second and third. Now in fourth place, number six, Carlos Serrano, all in yellow. In fifth place, number 10, Mike Baker. Those are the ones who, as of now, would move on into the final. But Hawkins Carlquist is still coming. He's in seventh place right now. We'll keep an eye on him. But look at this battle for second between Jeff Jennings, number eight, Graham Noy, number two. Here comes Noy right now, making a move. Alongside his man, can he get him? He has got him. Graham Noyce moving into second place in the race. We're coming up to the final lap in the motocross heat of the Superbikers in Carlsbad, California. Steve Wise will be taking the white flag. There it is, the universal symbol that you, sir, have one lap to go. Look, what was he doing there? He pointed down with his left hand towards the right side of his bike. Well, he was signaling something, Jim, to his pits. He was, was nothing to adjust on the bike uh, there where he had his hand, so he must have been signaling something must be wrong with the bike of Steve Wise. Can't tell anything as yet, but Steve Wise, the defending champion, is still the leader here. Just behind him, however, in second place is his teammate, Graham Noyce of England, and here, number six, is Carlos Serrano, and with him now is Hawkins Colquist. Hawkins Colquist has moved into fourth place in the race. Remember, he went off the course in the early going. Looked like he might have had it, but with masterful riding, really, has gotten himself back up there. Now Graham Noyce closing in on Steve Wise for the lead. And I think Wise is losing horsepower somehow, Jim. Something's wrong with his bike. See if he can hold on. I think Noyce is doing something very smart to Wise here, Jim. I think that Wise has been, I don't want to say cocky, he's been extremely self-confident all, all week so far. And I think Noyce, by shadowing him like this, is is working on Steve's mind a little bit. You know, he hasn't had to look in the mirror, so to speak, uh, so far. And he's responding, of course, to it, but I think he knows it's maybe a little chink in the armor. Boy, just a slight slip here would make the difference. Oh, look at Noyce. Look at him come. There. He, he must have been saving something. He really stuck at him, I'll tell you that, coming through that corner. Almost lost it himself, regained it, and has taken the lead. What a move by Graham Noyce of England. Sides it, Jim. He went right over the side, but of course he's getting right back on it if he can because if what we're looking at when he get in the final. He got it started. Okay, it started, and it looks like he'll still be in the top five. Oh. But Graham Noy <laughs> destroyed the concentration of Steve Wise, I think. And Just right at the last minute, look at Noy pull the front up. Okay, so he'll be on the first row of the final heat, and here is Steve Wise, still in second place. And he had another coming off there, Jim. And his bike is not going at top speed, not at all, but he's still going to be able to finish second. You can hear the sound of it. And here he is, Steve Wise, about to finish second, getting the checkered flag. I think he lost two things, really, on that last lap. Horsepower and concentration with Graham Noyce's teammate dogging him all the way around and finally taking the lead and the victory in the race. But, of course, he'll be moving on to the final. Another look, Sam. Noyce is in excellent position here, Jim. Wise is a little bit wide, and Noyce just gets right in underneath him. Now begins an interesting sequence. They're on the motocross part of the track, the part they're both arguably very familiar with, but both of them, first Noyce there, and now it, it we'll see Wise having a lot of trouble on this section. And what I think happened, and why I think Wise went off, is that in the heat of the moment, he felt that his bike would be able to do underneath him what his regular motocross bike would do, which would be to hold a turn like that. Of course, it couldn't, and I think that's why Steve Wise came off. And off he came, but back on he got, like the champion that he is, defending champion in the Superbikers. He'll certainly have plenty to think about before that final race. And so here's the way they finished in the motocross heat. The qualifiers, Graham Noyce of England, Steve Wise, the defending champion from Texas, Hocken Kalkwitz of Sweden, then Carlos Serrano and Jeff Jennings. All of those men into the final.
You'll see that final and the determination of this year's Superbikers champion next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. For now, this is Jim McKay with Sam Posey reporting from Carlsbad, California.